They've uh, obviously made, they've made some mistakes. Um, is that something that you, that's my dumb question, is that some, something that you try to attack the quarterback and try to kind of force some more of those just because the track records have been, been there? Who are you talking about making mistakes? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, you know, when we look at him, he's, he's also made some really good plays and some really good throws. If you watch some of the throws he had against the Jets and you watch some of them in the first game against Chicago, he's also made some really nice throws and he's had some really nice runs. Um, and he hasn't played a whole lot of football. And I, you know, whatever position, there's a lot of mistakes being made on the field early in the season, whether you're on offense, defense, and special teams. So, I mean, we got to go out and we got to worry about our mistakes and we got to worry about getting better every week. And we know we're going to have our hands full with their offense and he's a big part of it. The key to being a vision-based defense? The key to being a, a good, that's a good question. Um, rush plus coverage. Um, if you're going to play with vision on the quarterback, your rush has to speed up the quarterback. Or if he has time to throw it and guys to run around and get open, that's got to be tied in. Um, so the D-line's got to be going. We got to be hitting our drops right. We got to be on our landmarks. And we got to be playing off of him and, and anticipating the ball coming out quicker. Um, and being able to drive to the ball and, and hopefully we force the ball to be thrown in front of us and we're able to drive and eliminate explosives that way. Were you guys on the back end, do you, do you saddle them with a lot of rules so that they can play with vision or is it the opposite of that where you try to take the rules off and just let them see and react? Yeah, no, that's a good question. You, you have rules within every coverage. Um, I'll give you an example. If you're a pattern match team, you're spending a lot of time each week matching routes. You know, if two goes in, I do this. If two goes out, I do this. If two goes up, you always kind of look at two in, two out, two up. Same with three, right? And you kind of teach route recognition off of things like that. Um, you have rules as a team that plays with vision and break. And some of our coverage we're matching, and some of them we are playing off the quarterback like you're alluding to. Um, some are based on landmarks on the field, but they're also based on what different people are doing. Um, so there are definitely rules, but there's probably less rules. I think the key to coverage is learning what your issues are and learning how people are going to attack you. And I think the more you see us play, they'll get more and more comfortable with that and they'll start breaking even faster and making more plays on the football. Um, so I think hopefully that answers your question. Um, philosophically, like when you got here the first time, I think it was Matt who asked you, are you going to play man to man? bump and run all the time, right? Because that had kind of been what we had heard about you or expected from you. When did you become more of a believer in vision and break, and why is that so much superior? Because we're looking at a defense that's picked off five passes in two games with almost the same guys, not all of them, as a group that had seven all year last year. Yeah, I, again, I don't, I don't ever want to go back and forth and compare to last year or this year. I mean, we, we've played two games right now. Um, I still love to play man and I love to play press man. And I think if you turn on our film and you watch it, there's examples and times when we were doing that. And then there's times when we're playing with two high safeties and then there's times we're playing with one safety in the middle of the field and we're playing zone. Um, I think it also goes to who you're playing. Who's the quarterback, right? What are they going to do on third down? Is it a team that's going to try to condense you and pick you and rub you? Or is it a team that's going to kind of spread you out and let you get your hands on people and play good man coverage? So you can't just say, I'm going to go in and just be a man team every single week. you got to have answers. Um, and I think as we continue to go and we're on the field more and we get better at what we're doing, and I keep saying this, and we're able to evolve as we really learn each other and get used to playing with each other and get more comfortable with the scheme, you're going to see a little bit more of everything. Uh, but I think right for right now, it's what can our players do best? Um, how are we going to get attacked this week versus last week versus the first week against the Eagles? And it's our job, and I keep saying this, to put our players in position to make plays. I mean, that's the key. So you look at some of these interceptions like last week, you know, we caught them in an area of the field where there was a lot of play action shots and we sent a pressure and Quay did a great job. I mean, Quay disrupted the quarterback, the D-line did, McDuffie kind of followed suit and um, I thought the coverage was tight and X read him and he was in the middle field and was able to make a play. Um, Eric Wilson's pick, he was playing with vision on that, he kind of felt the route, he bent inside, the quarterback sped up and he was able to make the play. Um, I still think we should have had more and I don't say that like, you know, just coach speak, if you turn on the tape there were opportunities to get the ball more, just like in the first game and we have to take advantage of that. With, with the takeaways, um, does it almost, if, you, if you're getting two or three a game, does it almost not matter where your numbers are in rush defense or total yards or anything like that? Is the turnovers, can, is it a masking or is it a, 
you know, I guess a way of life. No, there, there's no, absolutely not. There is no masking. There's certain areas where we have to play better, and there's certain areas we're playing really good at times, and it's like four, five, six really good plays, and then all of a sudden there's one that you know, we need to play better and we need to coach better on. And that goes for a bunch. And then we kind of regroup and we got to eliminate those ones that are getting out. We are giving up too many explosive plays right now, which goes against the philosophy of our defense. And I think, the, again, the more we play, the better we coach, the more we're together, I think you're going to see those go down. The only number that's important to me is if we win or lose the game. I'm not going to be one of these guys up here that sits up here and brags about yards and takeaways and how can we win each game. We needed to play complimentary football last week to win. I think that was really important. We had to keep the score down, and we had to get the ball and give it back to our offense. And I think for the most part, we were able to do a pretty good job with that. I don't think they converted a third down until about two minutes and 40 seconds in the fourth quarter. So you got to play great on third down. You have to play great in the red zone. We were able to stop them in the red zone and hold them to a field goal. Then we were able to get a TFL that knocked them back, and they missed a field goal. Right? So, so we have to be great in those situations. The next step is we got to be better on you know, that fifth, sixth play where we look great, we look great, and then we let one out. I mean, that's the stuff that can't happen, and, and we all need to work on and fix that. But the only thing that matters to me is winning and losing and getting our players in the best position and seeing them have success and playing at a high level. Um, I'm not going to be a guy that sits here and brags about any yards, any statistic. I just personally, I really, that's not important to me. What have you thought of just the start that Xavier has been off to, though? And is this kind of the way you, know, you brought him in, sort of what you envision as far as what he's been doing back there to this point? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he's got the two picks in two games, but it's more than that. He's coming up in run support. He's helping some of the young guys in their checks. I mean, he's playing next to a rookie who I also think is off to a pretty good start. Um, and he's kind of being the captain back there, the quarterback there. And he's, he's done a really nice job with that. But that's exactly what I expected. He's a great football player. He can tackle, he can cover, he can play in deep zones. Um, you know, we blitzed him last game too. So he's a very versatile player and I think he's off to a really, really good start. And I'm very, very happy that he's here. Jeff, you, you mentioned earlier some of the runs that Levis has had. I know, you know, you talked about the guys, you know, with a, I guess, non-traditional rush idea in, against these first two quarterbacks. So are they, are they looking to try to cut it loose a little more? Do they still need to be wary of a guy like Levis in the scrambles? Like, what, what are your thoughts there going into this? Yeah, I think there's give and take. I mean, if you look at him, he's also, I mean, he's a guy that can run. I mean, he's had, he's had a bunch of yards on a bunch of carries, and he's had a bunch of big scrambles. So regardless who you play, I mean, you, you got to be aware of who's back there. Do we want to cut it loose more? Absolutely. I mean, I want to cut it loose every play if we can. I mean, I'd love to do that. It's just you can't be reckless either. I mean, you got to play sound defense. You got to have a plan. You got to have rush lanes. You got to have rules where if he does keep the ball, you have an answer for it. So all of a sudden, he doesn't pull one and pop it for 60 yards because you're just go, go, go. Um, but yeah, we, get, we have to be aggressive. And there's times where we need to be more aggressive. Um, but then there's times where, you know, we got to make sure we, we do our job and, and we make sure that we don't have guys popping out on us and running for 30 yards on a key third down of the game. Jeff, when you're rotating Stokes and Valentine, is that something you determine that rotation before the game, or are you looking for certain things in the game to determine, you know, when to put guys in and when to take them out? Yeah, no, that was that was determined before the game, um, and it was communicated before the game. Um, you know, CV's a guy that, and you guys know, he, he's missed a lot of the training camp, and, and we, I, we thought he was having a great training camp. Um, before he was injured and then he came back and we saw him practicing better and better and making some plays in practice and we just we thought he deserved to play um, the more guys that can have a role I think that's really really important and when they go out and they practice and they compete and they're doing all the little things right if they show that they deserve to play we got to find a way to get him on the field and we felt strongly about that and I thought he did some really nice things in the game uh, he was physical uh, he came down to run hard a few times he made a few good plays a few good tackles I thought he covered pretty well um, the more guys you can get involved in those positions you're going to need them I mean you're going to need those guys and then again as we go and we develop we can have packages where they're all in and that's that's a start for him that I'm excited he got some playing time Jeff, is that a, I know you haven't been everywhere, but is that a common philosophy? I was asking LaFleur about it earlier in the week. Like, I know this isn't middle school sports where everybody gets to play, but it does seem like you guys on both sides of the ball find ways to get more guys involved than maybe at least I've seen historically. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's, you know, that's a great question to ask Matt, like you did, his philosophy on it. You know, ours on defense right now is if guys deserve to play and they can help us win, um, we're all in this thing together on defense, every guy in that room and every coach in that room. So if we can get other guys developed and experienced and playing and keep some guys fresh, it's a long season. And we want to peak at the right time and make sure we have other guys ready to play. I mean, I think it's important that we continue to do that. And I think as you watch this over the next few weeks, you're going to continue to see that. And you'll probably, ha you'll probably see more guys have different roles and different packages as we can really get this thing going. Um, but for week two right now, I, I think the coaches are doing a really good job of coaching and teaching the fundamentals, the scheme, and then getting guys involved. I mean, I just, do I believe like every guy should play just because they're here? No. But if a guy deserves to play and he can help us win, I, I think that's our job to get him out there. Um, and, and, and I want to continue to do that. What do you think of what Evan gave you in the 20 snaps he had on Sunday? I thought he did some really nice things in his first game. You know, like I said last week, and we probably should have played him in that first game. And, um, you know, I thought he earned that, and, and we gave him some of those reps. I thought he had a really nice break in two minutes where he almost had an interception on the first one uh, where we slipped on the corner route to our left. And then, obviously, he had the play on the Hail Mary at the end of the game. Um, you know, I, I, there's some plays where you can see he had it in practice, he knew it, and he just, you know, he was, he's close, right? And, and I think as the game went and he got comfortable, he started to see things faster and better. And I think that's going to come with time. So you take a rookie who hadn't played an NFL game and it's home in Lambeau, and I think he did a nice job. And I'm excited to see more of him. He's a good football player. You, you guys are excited about Cooper after week one, then Eric had the game they did in week two. Can you get those guys more snaps, recognizing that you're going to play nickel, so there's only so many snaps to go around? Yeah, there's only so many snaps to go around. And I'm very grateful we didn't play 80 snaps again like we did week one. So I'll definitely err on the side of playing less snaps every game if we can. And if Matt wants to run the ball 54 times a game, I'll be the first one to congratulate him after for doing so. Um, but yeah, there, there's only so many plays and there's only so many packages. Um, but we need to play him more. And, Again, I think you'll see when we, we're here next week, I think you'll see his numbers go up. And we're starting to find out there's certain things that he does really well, and we need to take advantage of that. I thought Eric, honestly, if you, I mean, what did Eric play, like eight or nine plays? Yeah, you guys got the numbers pretty good. I mean, for the eight plays that he played, I mean, holy cow, what a game he had. I mean, that TFL he made when they checked the speed option, and he, he, we kicked that thing backward, and that's one of the biggest plays of the game right there. Um, and then the interception that he had on the seam ball. And then I, I think you guys probably saw the one that he ran down when we had the edge set. We kind of jumped inside. They hit us on a toss on the perimeter. And he came running back. No, it's a screen. He came out on the screen and he came in. Do you see the ball laying on the sideline? I mean, do you see the effort that he had and the way he punched it? Uh, that's how the guy practices. And we should have gotten that ball too. What was the key for Eric on the interception being able to make that play? I think in the situation, I think, you know, I th I think this is a good question for him, and I don't want to put words in his mouth. I think in the situation, the formation, he had a really good jump on what was about to come, but it was his technique on that route that he had. He had a seam, and a lot of guys in that coverage, they'll go straight back and they'll start to widen, and if you do that, you're going to get hit inside. And it was like, it was beautiful. Like, it was like slow motion watching up there. He went straight back, the guy bent, he bent inside and matched it, and the quarterback's probably anticipating him widening and throwing inside, and he just went right up and made the play. So it looked probably easier than it was, but it's because he played it so well. Just a general uh, defensive question. What's the, what's the challenge, the hard part of facing a tight end who's a complete player? Yeah, that, again, good question. You're talking about if a guy's able to line up wide, come back in the box and block, and then line up in the backfield and do all those stuff. Yeah, he just he creates mismatches, right? It's who are you going to put on him? Are you going to put a linebacker on him? Are you going to put a safety on him if you want to cover him? And then all of a sudden, if he can line up and it looks like a spread out game, but now all of a sudden he's in the back backfield and creates like a two back game. So you're defending a lot of different things. So do you want to have bigger people on the field or smaller, smaller people on the field? Do you want to get an athlete out there to cover him? Or when he comes in the backfield, do you want a bigger guy to play the run? So it just it creates versatility in what they can do with him on the field. I'm assuming you're talking about Tennessee's tight end? But, okay. okay, just in general, anytime you get an athletic tight end 
who can play like a wide receiver and is good enough to block, is an inline tight end, and is athletic enough to do all the sifts and fullback stuff, you got a, you got a pretty good one. Hey, Jeff, where is, um, where is Quay two games into your system compared to where he could be eventually? You, I know you really like how he fits what you do, but he's had some, he's had some moments, right? Um, yeah, we've, all, we've all had moments. I mean, I've had moments. I love where Quay's at, and, and not where Quay could be, where Quay is going to be, I love that even more. There's some plays you turn on now, and you're like, wow. I mean, look at that. That's exactly what we're talking about. You're also talking about a guy who's playing in a totally different scheme, right? And he's seeing a lot of different things for the first time. And the way he works, I mean, the way he practiced today, I mean, I'm really excited for where he is going to be. And I'm very, very pleased with him right now and very confident in him. Hey, Jeff, real quick, you were talking about the ball lying on the ground after Eric. Yeah, she got that one. Do you want your guy to, the closest guy to that, to kind of keep it in bounds, or does he just have to die? I want it in bounds. I mean, yeah. If, I mean, I'm sure he was trying to get it. I mean, their guy did a nice job now. That's why you run to the ball. You see their guy run? Right, right. That's why you run. Right, like if that guy wasn't running to the ball, we would have gotten the ball. But in that situation, yeah, absolutely. Running, don't, because if any part of your body, when you, if any part of your body's out of bounds, it's out of bounds, right? So you gotta do everything you can to get on it or swat it back and give us another chance. But yeah, I can just picture it lying right there.